Yeah. Are they, I forgot uh, about it. Are they picking up? <laughs> All right, we have speed. Look at that, Marco. Are which, we going? Which are camera we are we looking at, though? The, the engine's running. Oh, okay. <laughs> what? Yeah, exactly. What? Okay. <laughs> turn, turn it to 11. <laughs> it's already at 11, man. It is 11 in there. It's That's 11 no in there. That. So, Sean. Marco. We're sitting. We are sitting. We, we usually it's nice stand. To sit. <laughs> I know. It's nice to sit. And we're sit. not miking anybody. Nope. We're actually having the mic position on us, which is a luxury. Right. But uh, I'm excited to be here. It is a luxury. It's a luxury to have Christina with us as well. Yeah. It's been a great experience. <laughs> Thank you guys for having me. How has it been so far? You know, this is my second time at RSA this year. It's been a lot of fun. And I think it's just a great event for gathering and meeting people and reuniting with friends that we you know, get to see sometimes just once a year. And there's a lot of new activity this year too, so. What about you? I know this is the, what, the third, second time? My second, 10th time <laughs> for 20, 20 total. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, a lot has changed. I think the escalator is the same coming down. The escalator but, uh, is the same? It was I there? Not, you notice I take the stairs down though. <laughs> yeah. And I take the stairs back up. Why? Because I eat a lot. <laughs> I eat a lot, so. Uh, Gotta work it off. Yeah, the logos changed. I think the technology stayed the same. We just rebrand it and throw a sprinkle a little AI on top and uh, off we roll. But uh, loads of people here, that's for sure. A lot of people, a lot of noise. So here, here's what I want to do here. So this is kind of our recap for the day, but it's also for yesterday and the day before and the day before and maybe we'll do a recap for tomorrow if we can <laughs> read that today we well, can yeah. read into the future mm -hmm. but uh what i would like to do is to take the opportunity you you've been doing cyber for a while cyber security yeah. Yeah. you've been doing it for i don't even more than 20 years obviously i'd that's like a, to take the third 10. <laughs> i'd like third. to take this opportunity to do a little bit of uh, what i like to do so on my show looking back and looking at where we are okay. to see if it's really just AI sticker slapped on something. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's a joke, I guess. But so, um, when did you get into cyber? So I started. I guess I was an I was an ethical hacker. And ethical <laughs> hacker? I shouldn't put that into air quotes. <laughs> no, you should never do. The ethical actor. Well, so I started hacking. Let's start it again, Chuck. <laughs> Cut. I started hacking about 20 years ago as a hobby, and that as grew a hobby. as a hobby. On, on non-hobby stuff, though. What? On non-hobby stuff. Non-hobby stuff. Let's cut that too. Let me start over. Hold on one second before I like. Okay, I never that, did that anything illegal. There were no laws back then. <laughs> no okay. laws. Yeah. So or, or uh, I started off as a web developer and I got into hacking and I learned how to hack into different websites and things ethically and uh, continued working as a web developer and um, at the same time also worked as a journalist. And my path into cyber kind of, you know, was indirect. I went into uh, journalism, marketing, and continued with web development on the side. And then eventually I moved into the, the GRC uh, portion and started working with ISO. And um, that evolved into going to graduate school for a master's in cybersecurity and MBA. Right, but now you have this new show. Mm -hmm. And you talk about AI. So. I do, yes. <laughs> Surprise, Surprise, right? Surprise, yes. So, your take since when you in a, in, a, in a few words since when you started um, how different it is now besides AI <laughs> besides AI I think it's it's matured mature yes cybersecurity has definitely matured um, I remember you know back in the early 2000s there was so much that we did not have that we have today and the policies and the development continue to change 
year in, year out as the technology changes and emerging technologies come through and start to impact our day to day. So there's been, I've seen maturity over the last couple of decades. So it's not a wild west anymore? Not as much as a wild, wild west, I, I <laughs> you know, can't, can't say it is. There, there's a lot more regulations about Sean, things. do you agree? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> AI no, I is wild west. <laughs> AI is wild west. I think the, um, it certainly has matured, no mm -hmm. question about that. I, I was, I just came here from, uh, from a CISO luncheon, hanging out with a few friends and meeting some new ones. And we were talking about the maturity of the industry and have we have we created a monster? Oh, with the I like we're going into Frankenstein. We are going to Frankenstein. All right. Have we have we created a, a machine that can't keep up with itself? Because um, when, when I three, 30 years ago, let's just say it, when I started, nobody really knew or cared. We can still say that today, but really nobody knew or. They're passing viruses around on floppy disks, right? So the industry did a lot to educate and did a lot with the media and the press to raise awareness of breaches and things like that. Not, not unlike today, but because it was so new, it was very dramatic and it really boosted things like this. And it basically built an, an industry that uh, I don't know how many, 3,000 3, vendors or something at this point. Yeah. So is it, is it the monster that, that has to feed constantly in order to survive? Uh, or it can, and I, do you remember before we started, I said I'm going to say bad things about the industry, <laughs> but in a, in a nice way. So is it necessary to have this industry on its own? or did it slowly eventually going to embed into other industry like technology, embed in you know, clothing and manufacture and whatever you want? Well, the, the interesting thing is, I, and I've heard this before the show and I've actually heard it here as well, that there's been a lot of, I don't know the best way to put it, but the CIO comes up a lot in addition to the CISO. Mm -hmm. And so much more collaboration, much more integration. The CIO leading a lot of the, what is really secure by design, right? So taking, here are the business things we're trying to achieve. And we're going to enable those with technology and bring security. So I'm starting to hear that. As well as still security kind of leading, but maybe more from a risk perspective. So let certainly controls too. I think it's it definitely a mix, but I guess my point is the IT space, and especially now that we have the OT space, uh, those two are looking OT at- OT for the non-practitioner. <laughs> the non-operational <laughs> technology. I think we're starting to see what can those two groups lead the charge with and learn from security to do that in a better way. So patching and risk management, and some of those things baking those in, designing with security in mind from the beginning, and building stuff secure from the beginning. It's not, it's not a new story, but the way people are talking about it, and specifically the, the CIO role coming up over and over and over, is catching my attention. It's probably the sign of maturity right. that you were talking about. Feel free to disagree. I know, tell I, me I'm wrong. No, for, for me it's the, the policies, the regulations and the laws. As technology changes, all of that changes, but we need to develop that in order to keep up with the technology. And that's where uh, I, I have a lot of concerns with emerging tech. Can we keep up with that from that end of it, from that perspective? So is a, I know you're interested in AI, so I'm gonna connect the monster Frankenstein, <laughs> and of course AI make me think about a brain. Abby, Abby something. Abby not. <laughs> Abby, no, normal. Abby normal. Are we putting it, uh, the weird brain in our, <laughs> in our machine? <laughs> so AI, um, and we need this regulation to be sure that we're not doing it in a bad way. Definitely. That's the, that's yeah. the thing. 
We definitely it's on, need it. It's on display that. in the stage. <laughs> I can I see know. it over there. I would like to see actually. I'm going to give the idea of right? you know, a, like a monster. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. No, I, I think we do need that in order to keep up so it doesn't turn into a monster. Um, because there is a danger to it. With any tool can be used as a weapon. But if we are not using those tools and being responsible and accountable, then it can become a monster. It can become a problem. But you do have, and I know because I heard some of your conversation today and yesterday, when I'm monitoring you, <laughs> I learn, you know, that there is a very moment always in your conversation with with vendors, with experts, where you're like, yeah, but it's too much regulation going to block innovation. And there's always that balance mm -hmm. that I'm not sure where it is, but I mean, you had already at least 10 conversation in these two days about that. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, the, the challenge with well, there's many challenges to regulation, right? So only those who have money can meet the regulations, and those that don't, that likely have some brilliant ideas, never see their stuff come to market. Um, regulation then, if you're using technologies as an organization, not just building them, but if using technologies, you're, you spend a lot of time reporting against how well, and we talked about this in some of the governance conversations, how much time are you spending just proving that you're doing the right thing per all of these things, whether it be an industry, a, a sector, a, a government, a, a law, whatever it is. All these things you have to juggle mm -hmm. just to bring something forward. And I, sadly, I think it's necessary, um, but I, I question, well, even just with AI, right? if somebody wants to do something bad with it, there's no regulation or framework or standard or or anything that's going to say I'm just going to go for it, right? Right. right. Um, I still see drones flying in no drone areas. Right. <laughs> right. right. They they get away for a while and then, then they get caught and they move off somewhere else. But yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um. All right. That's cool. Uh, no, it's not. It's not cool. <laughs> well, I could keep going. As a matter of fact teaser alert, I'm going to have a conversation right here after this with a guy, an investigative journalist, that has been looking at cybercrime, money laundering, yep. and crime.com was his first book, so teaser for J.F. White, nice. which I'm going to host yes. really soon here, and it connects with that. You know, you may have regulation, but if all the good guys follow the rules, the bad guys don't care. They're going to take advantage of it. So it's it's hard. Yeah. It's really, really hard. So I, I'm curious to know what uh, what Jeff yeah, is going to unveil on that. But. I, I want your thoughts on AI regulation because we, we've seen it for privacy, right? EU did a great job. Great job. They did something anyway, good or bad, or however you take it. The U.S. kind of mixed match, different states. They're make, some things coming nationally. AI is kind of, to me, that same pattern again, right? Mm -hmm. We see the AI Act in the UK and right. in Europe. You see some states taking action in right. the US and then, and then the government as well now at the federal level looking at it. But it's going to be a mixed match. It I is. Think. I think so. I think um, at times, you know, we see Europe doing things a little bit faster than the U.S. is doing them. And then we follow maybe behind that, right. you know. But what happens in other countries and other regions impacts what we are doing here and how we are doing what we do with regulations and, and GRC. So, but, you know, there, there does have to be that balance to make sure that what we are doing is right for us domestically so that we can continue to work internationally, whether that is, you know, in private industry or government and be able to compete and protect yeah. as well. 
Yeah. It, th this reminds me, Marco, of the conversation we had with um, Kate Esprit. You remember? We were talking about the, the geopolitics of, of the technology and who you buy from and how you deploy it and you, who you have serviced. The, the solutions you ought to use could put you as a company and as a state and as a nation perhaps even in a political position that just because you select some technology, right? And I think same thing for AI, how you use it, how you apply it, how you let the society use it, I think might put folks in a position geopolitically that could change boundaries and, and how we collaborate, interact with each other. Yeah, it, it, she was talking specifically about cybercrime in South America. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, but, but selecting but selecting a, a particular network switch from a nation state that's not friendly with the U.S. Right. Where, you know, it, where does it, that na nation using that technology? It, it, that's oh. why you you invited me on that conversation because it was very much about so, social demographic and economy actually because when does the crime go and recruit most of the time is where people need job and need to make money because they're like that's we're giving you money it's it's like mafia <laughs> you know yeah. i mean it, it has become the, always it's always been the state inside the state mm -hmm. it's grow because it couldn't the people couldn't trust the state so yeah. The organized crime got in between and said, we take care of you, right. you take care of me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm Italian, I know this. <laughs> but, uh, but the same thing was coming out in South America. And uh, to be honest, the same thing, I had a conversation with uh, a uh, congressional nominee, which she's here, Madison Horn, right yeah. before, as part of the pre-event coverage. And she was talking about her state, which is Oklahoma, which is not one of the most rich state at all in the United States, and how she is running uh, because she wants to bring technology and cybersecurity to the forefront of the way we do politics and legislation, but also to bring jobs mm -hmm. with technology and not looking at it as fear. Like, uh, with technology, Come cyber security, cyber crime, and therefore we better don't have it. No, yeah. you you can't do that. You know, it, it's not like if I don't want to be fish, I'm not gonna use email. No, you you can't do that. You know, you gotta use the car even if you may risk something, but do it as safely as you can. Yeah. And regulation help. So yeah. that's a good example of how that works. Well, I think we need to regulate education to include this. I think, I don't know, it's, it's interesting to me because I, I, I see over the years, I see yeah. a lot of cycles yeah. where the, the technology is built for governments and large enterprises and then we try to feed it down into the small mid-market and then it ends up into the consumer space and then, it, then the threats change and the technology grows and it it kind of cycles back through and and throughout this cycle I also see businesses sprout and, and new services being offered to help companies use the technology manage the technology monitor the technology all this stuff and it, it's it it's because there aren't enough people to support all of the companies mm -hmm. for all of those technologies all those against all those threats 24-7. So we need companies that offer services, but then we bring new technologies in that creates even more services. Yeah. So we just, I guess, kind of my point earlier, we're, we continue to add layers, right? And partly it's because we're, we're adding technology layers, Right. but for every technology layer and every business process and every data set, we're adding more controls and more policies and more the need for more people for all of this stuff and I I don't know if we I don't know if it, that, that's the monster that I was talking about I don't know if we yeah. can sustain that it's, I don't know if it'll sustain it the technology is so embedded in everything we do in our day to day lives no matter what industry we look at whether it's financial healthcare education it's in everything and I think 
you know, for those of us inside and outside the industry, we have to realize that technology is not, you know, there, there is no physical border to it. So it doesn't matter what state you're in, it doesn't matter what country you're in or what region you're in, there are no physical borders. We're all interacting, right? So I think it's important to keep that in mind. Yeah, so, and, I, and I come back to the idea that is a, you know what I'm visioning is very visual in the way I, I talk. Uh, well, phone guys, they, what you see on the oh, surface, yeah. it's nothing. They, they all meet microcosmo mycosis underneath. That's where all is networked, and we don't even know where it goes. And I feel like that monster is kind of like that. I've seen a TV, uh, The Last of Us, I think, was about that. But the point is, it, it's everywhere, even when we don't right. realize it. And the everyday user that say, oh, now there is AI. And you're like, yeah. no, AI has been here for a right. long yeah. time. Yes. Maybe it wasn't as buzzword as now no, and yeah. not embedded in your phone. Right. But it was here. And that's so you just can't ignore it anymore. Yeah. Everything is connected. Yeah, I mean, machine learning has been around for years, but now that a it's AI and that's the buzzword, it's suddenly like it's it's like this new thing, but it really isn't this new thing. It's, yeah. It is new in the sense that it is now getting embedded into everything, into our phones, our emails, our softwares, um, you know, whether you want it or not sometimes. And is the the consequence of everything connected. If we didn't have the internet, we probably, I mean, AI was, Turing was looking at it in the, in the 40s, right? But, in the 50s, but we didn't have the technology right. really to do it. But it's always been that Fra Dr. Frankenstein <laughs> dream, right? Yes. Anyway, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Yeah. Yes. Now we have the technology to leverage that for good or evil. Evil. Yeah. Hmm? Evil. 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 <laughs> but it, I don't know. But as you not were today. But not today. <laughs> as you were describing the uh, the fun guy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm picturing it. We had this conversation, more of a philosophical, but we were talking kind of like ants and. The what? We were talking about ants and life and. Oh that. yeah, yeah. Remember that? But anyway, I was picturing. The, the fun guy is just. It's not just the fun guy there. Right there's dirt and there are ants in the ground and and rain and the sun and all this stuff and so I, I'm mentioning that because I I'm looking back at the conversations leading up to this conference I don't know maybe half of them directly tied back to supply chain in some way and the others touched on it in some way even the conversations I haven't had any direct supply chain or bill of materials yet conversations here on location directly but they've all touched on it as well and I think that's the other part that's really interesting to me in terms of a sustainability perspective there's a lot to make this happen right supply software supply chain even just for the security software right, right? We, we saw solar winds and other stuff where those weaknesses can take out the stuff that's using yeah. being used to protect us so I think the, and the government's on this at least in the US so I think there's, there's some positive movement there but I'm, I'm thrilled to have more conversations on that topic because yeah. I think it's a critical one the, yeah. I was having a conversation earlier today about supply chains and supply chains in, in Asia and how you know when that's impacted other parts of the world are also impacted because they're connected so, and then that's another thing, like we can't be so insular to think that what's happening in this country is only happening here because it impacts supply chains, you know, outside of the U.S. going both directions. Yep. And you're going to have a chat with uh, Helen on AI, Bob? Yes, <laughs> yes. I will be that's talking about we'll materials Helen. for AI. Yes. All right, let, let's take this last, let's take 10 minutes. As we monopolize our own broadcast alley today, we're doing this. Our monster alley. Um, monster yeah, a little. Alley. <laughs> I know, again, you've done a, a lot of uh, interview already. So far, the vibe, what's the pulse of, of the event and what, what, what's coming up tomorrow, today, later today. And same thing for her. And 
a real recap. Right now we've been <laughs> recap. expressing That's ourselves. It's dangerous to try to remember everything. I think... Um, Not everything. I, no, no, I think there, it's a few themes. So I, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of data. So focusing on the data again. Data. I think there's a lot of data, data, data. A lot of realization that that the perimeter, and it's not nothing, it's nothing new here. The perimeters change, non-existent, porous, whatever you want to. Uh, I think that's impacting how technologies are transforming their IT stack and changing the way they manage their people stack. I know you love it when I say people. Stack. No, but um, but it, it it's forcing a shift in how we put controls on the technology and monitor those controls and look for anomalies because back to the data, there's so much more data. And one conversation in particular with, uh, with Colby, was talking, because I, I built a sim and the hardest part was getting all the data parts together so you can have a picture in a way that a human and maybe ultimately some machines can automate a response to something bad happening before it becomes an issue. And it comes back to the data again for that, for me. And so I think there's... Garbage in, garbage out. Garbage in, I garbage love to out. say that. Uh, you're missing a piece. You, what, Every time I can, I just plug garbage in, garbage out. A cherry pie without the crust? I don't know. <laughs> Is that any good? I like cherries, but not what I was expecting. But... Um, yeah, and I think the other point I made is just the idea that that organizations still need help. You can't just throw some technology or ten layers of technology and, and yet another new one to solve all the problems. In fact, that can make things more complex and cause more challenge and create more exposure. And so I don't know, I, I think I continue to see organizations growing and new businesses blooming and we'll see. I don't know. That, that's over the next couple of days. I'm more of the same. I think, to be honest with you. I don't know if there's any any shockers coming. We'll see. So I said governance, data, and AI. Yeah. Can we what can we bet on these three buzzwords for the year? You want well, to add I didn't even mention one? resilience. The resilience. Resilience. Well, is resilience is old. It's like it, it was like five years ago, right? But it goes back to my. <laughs> it's still here. It goes here. back to my point. Because especially when we look at operational, I'm sorry, I'm taking more than 10 minutes. But if we look at operational technology, running a manufacturing thing, resilience means the, the line doesn't go down. Yeah. Right? And it's not just that it loses power, it's that it could potentially have a denial of service. And I think IT or the OT team are learning from the IT team to say, this is what resilience means. Mm -hmm. We better bring security in. And I think we've struggled with security leaning or leading the resilience message and people just saying, that's not it, anyway. There's also generative AI. That's, a, that's a, another buzzword that we're hearing because a lot of companies are using generative AI in their operations and their products and with their own data as well. And then another you know, area of concern is, is the data and the privacy involved with that. And how do we protect that, especially when we're using AI and giving AI access to all of that, right? And you know, that makes me a little bit nervous sometimes. Okay. Are you, um, does it make uh, this experience come some ideas in your mind for future conversation on your show? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, definitely want to I want to talk to a lot of people about generative AI and, and how they're using that, but how are they using that safely and ethically? Um, I also, are, we're going to be having different conversations about the AI bill of materials and how that is going to be applied as well, but also how that will change in the coming years as AI gets more incorporated into what we're doing. Very cool. I am excited for everything. <laughs> and nothing, all at the same time. <laughs> I don't know, like, sometimes I wonder if events like these are necessary. Like, 
do we need to have this old show, this old circus moving, which certainly gave job to a lot of people. A lot of people come here. But why do we come to this event? I think often we, we have this conversation because when we couldn't come a few years ago, we said, this is what we're missing, right? right. Networking with people, coming up with idea. It's not really something tangible that you sell, cybersecurity, and I can dive a little bit into the marketing of it. We're not, we don't have the box mm-hmm. <laughs> anymore. And, and you, give the, you sell the idea of security, it's kind of like what you do with pharmaceutical, drug, insurance, and banks, and finance. But we don't have event for that kind of thing. Of course, maybe because the community is not so, doesn't need to be so innovative. Well, maybe we don't know about those events. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Okay, touche. I, 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 I think these are critical events to have. I think there's a lot of money being spent that maybe organized in a different way could get a bigger bang for the buck, but I think just the fact that uh, Anthony Blinken was here and got coverage, True. right? Mm-hmm. Awareness from that perspective, that alone is is, is uh, significant. I think tons of different roles here. I mean, we have students. I think you're, you're going to talk to some students, yes. hopefully. Mm-hmm. Uh, students are here. I think to my education point earlier, that group needs to know that this monster industry <laughs> exists, right? So they can become part of it and hopefully, hopefully help out. There are defenders in the organizations. There are companies trying to find the problems, right? So I think that connection between the defenders and the and the solution providers, not just to sell and hopefully buy stuff, but to understand the challenges and, and take it back to R and D. So I, I think and for the me, competition, they're, they're, the fuel, right? Innovation and too. the innovation, absolutely. Yeah, and I think we come here for connection. Yeah. And that's something that's also important to have, not just virtually, but it's nice to be able to connect with other people face to face and to, to develop those connections and, and continue to, to foster those relationships as well. And like for me, that, that's one of the reasons that I, I come to RSA and I, I go to different conferences. It's, it's to be able to connect because what are we striving to protect? We're striving to protect the people that we care about. We're striving to protect the connections and relationships that we have. And that for me is, is what drives me in cybersecurity to help keep people safe. But it's, it's not without care. So of course those connections are, are important and that's definitely one of the reasons I think we have these events. Yeah, for me it's about the it's kind of like the old school World Trade Fair back in the 1800, 1900. You wanted to have the best product to present, to yep. showcase what you could do, either Edison presenting the light bulb or, mm-hmm. you know, or, or other innovation. It was, it's, it's even now. And I'm saying this because it's not just about we are very close to the expo here. We'll, we'll show you in other episode on the camera. But also on the other side, there is the the expo, the sandbox, yeah, the, the innovation sandbox, where there is all the new company that are competing. There are 10 finalists, which some of them we talked to. Yeah. Uh, there is our friends at the villages, so I'm gonna throw um, you know shout out for them from the IoT, the AppSec, the physical security, and of course, aerospace. my favorite, the aerospace, mm-hmm. my, my yeah. good friends. And uh, and that's also what it's about. Yes. Yeah. So I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to have this opportunity to have a chat with you guys. Yep. And to have many more here right after this and tomorrow. Yeah. And um, I have one pet peeve I want to see change. One more thing from one, Sean. I always the have swag? one more thing. What's that? <laughs> the swag? Well, I was gonna, that was going to be my second. I, I'm not a big fan of the swag and, the, and all that waste. Thankfully, they don't even offer us a bag, so I don't have to decline it or give it away. But the one thing I don't like seeing are these billboards on trucks driving around and sitting <laughs> idle, pumping out exhaust as I'm 
cruising around in the area. I don't need to see that ad on the truck through the through the, through the fog of exhaust. Right, well, let's start the movement. Let's try a different one. Let's start a movement. You know who you are. <laughs> you know who you are. Yep, we know who you yeah, are. Some of my friends. You know who you are. All right, well, All right. you know. It's That's my bit. I'm done. You're done? I'm out of here. You're done? You're done? I'm good, yeah. We're done. We're done.